it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. We have a lot of juicy Royal Tea to get through today so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. So we have some exciting royal wedding news. The very first royal wedding in Portugal in almost 25 years. Infanta Maria Francisca de Bronza, Duchess of Cumbria, married her longtime boyfriend, lawyer Duarte de Souza Martins in the first Portuguese royal wedding in 25 years. Now the Duke and Duchess of Bronza's only daughter, 26, got engaged last year after first being linked to her boyfriend in 2019. Now, following their very lavish wedding ceremony at the convent palace of Mafra, the happy couple looked delighted as they stepped out together to the adoring crowds and well-wishers. Can you just imagine the excitement of the very first royal wedding in 25 years? Now, the bride looked so pretty and elegant in a very simple ivory wedding gown that featured a sophisticated V-neck and long sleeves with a long skirt that billowed out with a matching long train. But she also paired it with Queen Amelie's diamond tiara. Now, according to the BBN network, thousands of guests, many of whom are foreign royal family members and socialites, were in attendance. Now, reports say that the religious ceremony saw the newlyweds exchange rings in front of thousands of guests as guests then enjoyed reading from holy passages. Now, the wedding festivities are understood to have taken place all weekend long. So congratulations to the happy couple. So Netflix has released their season premiere for the final season, season six of The Crown. Now, part one is going to premiere on November 16th, and part two will premiere on December 14th. Now, this season is going to be very controversial, as it's going to cover all the major events from 1997 through 2005. Now, the creator of the show, Peter Morgan, has previously stated it will not cover the era of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Thank the Lord. Now, the Netflix synopsis of the final season reads, A relationship blossoms between Princess Diana and Dodi Fayed before a fateful car journey has devastating consequences. Prince William tries to integrate back into life at Eton in the wake of his mother's death as the monarchy has to ride the wave of public opinion. As she reaches her golden jubilee, the queen reflects on the future of the monarchy with the marriage of Charles and Camilla and the beginnings of a new royal fairy tale in William and Kate. Now, I am one, a huge fan of The Crown. It is historical fiction. A lot of people get up in arms about it. They get very offended. It is just a TV show. It's actually very well done. Now, I will say last season wasn't the greatest. Season five was okay. Some of the casting was a little bit off. But for the most part, it is a very well done program and it is the final season. So let me know if you are a fan of historical fiction, if you're a fan of The Crown, and if you plan to tune in to the final season. Could Sarah Ferguson become the next Ellen? Rumor on the street is, is that Sarah Ferguson wants to host a brand new TV show in America and that she wants to use that money to help support Prince Andrew pay his $2 million Royal Lodge fee. Now, we do know that Sarah Ferguson in the 80s and the 90s was a huge hit in America. People really did love the vivacious redheaded duchess who was besties with Princess Diana. She was a huge spokesperson for Wedgwood China and Weight Watchers. So according to an insider who happens to be a TV producer and friend of Sarah Ferguson, she mentioned that the two ladies caught up with each other in New York City last month 
where Sarah Ferguson told her she wants a talk show. Now, her friend does believe that this could be a possible option for Sarah Ferguson. Now, the TV producer is named Amy Rosenblum, and she said she first met Sarah Ferguson around 15 years ago, where Sarah Ferguson actually recorded a TV pilot that did very, very well. However, the network bosses decided to go with Ellen DeGeneres instead. So could Sarah Ferguson be the next daytime darling and take over for Ellen DeGeneres? Now, currently, daytime TV, in my opinion, isn't really great. You have people like Kelly Clarkson and Drew Barrymore that have pretty successful TV shows along with the talk and the view. So could Sarah Ferguson find herself in the hearts of Americans on daytime TV? Right now, she currently has a really good podcast. So who knows? Maybe she will become the next daytime darling. What do y'all think? Would you watch a TV show with Sarah Ferguson? So today is World Mental Health Day and the Prince and Princess of Wales are marking today by participating in a forum to highlight how we can boost our mental well-being. The Prince and Princess of Wales arrived in Birmingham today where they will host a youth forum to mark Mental Health Day. The Prince and Princess of Wales have been advocating mental health awareness on a number of occasions throughout their royal careers, and they feel very passionate about ensuring young people especially feel free and able to openly talk about the subject. They want to get the message across that in order to boost our resilience and our overall mental well-being, we need to strengthen our ability to recognize and manage our emotions. Today's event, named Exploring Our Emotional Worlds, focuses on how understanding our own emotions and building positive relationships can serve as a solid foundation for our mental well-being. Now, during the forum, around 100 young people representing 10 mental health and youth engagement charities around the country will share their stories about their mental health challenges their generation faces. Now, Catherine looked absolutely stunning. Again, she's wearing her professional princess wear, another pantsuit, but she donned a beautiful bright yellow blazer. Now, she also wore a pair of earrings that were given to her in June by a grieving mother whose daughter had unalived herself at the age of 17 earlier this year. So she paid homage to that woman by promising to wear the earrings and she looked absolutely lovely. So William and Catherine want to give young people a voice so they can explore what more they could do to understand and manage their emotions better while also discussing possible solutions as they can look after their own each other's mental well-being. Now, the royal couple also participated in a series of workshops focused on emotions, relationships, and community action, along with the young participants. All in all, it looked like a very successful event, and I love the fact that William and Catherine are such strong proponents for mental health, not only with young people, but also William is very passionate about mental health in men. Again, I feel it's just very important that a lot of people understand there is help out there and there are solutions. So rumor is, is that Meghan Markle is still shopping around hoping that another streaming service is going to pay her the big bucks to produce her failing podcast, Archetypes Season 2. Now, according to insiders, they believe that Audible, the streaming source on Amazon, may be interested in Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Now, this is through her relationship with WME, her agency who hasn't done one thing in the past six months 
But according to an insider, WME has a very close working relationship with Audible. So now they're in talks to have Meghan Markle on their platform. They say that Meghan Markle is trying to once again copy the Obamas, just like they did with Penguin Random House and Spotify. Meghan Markle in her bird brain thinks she's Michelle Obama. She thinks she's going to get $30 million. Well, honey, you're not going to get it. Anyone who gives Harry and Meghan this amount of money deserves to go broke, okay? Just look at Spotify. They are in the red. They've lost millions of dollars investing in Harry and Meghan. We don't even know if Penguin Random House has actually turned a profit from his book, Spare. I highly doubt it. Netflix barely made any money back through the Netflix docu-series. Everything else they have done for Netflix so far has been a bomb. It has tanked. But now, according to the insider, Meghan Markle is in talks with Audible through her agency, WME, about getting herself on this huge streaming platform. But when you have two large executives from your previous company label you a lazy grifter telling people they're in the red with the president of Spotify recently coming out telling us the reason why Meghan Markle's podcast failed is because she didn't produce what the consumer wanted. The consumer didn't like it. So Audible, you might want to have a conference call with the two people on Spotify who can give you the inside 411 on what it's like to work with Harry and Meghan and what you can expect in your financial return. News flashed, you ain't going to make any money. Just a thought. So I believe Audible could possibly offer Meghan Markle and Prince Harry a deal, but it's not going to be anywhere near $30 million, maybe a million dollars, because let's be honest, Harry and Meghan, they draw attention. So Audible would get a lot of attention, but is it the right kind of attention? Are they the right people that you want on your platform? Now, according to the insider, the type of deal they would have is where Audible would have the first right of refusal, meaning if Meghan Markle gives them a turd, they don't have to polish it and publish it. They can legally say, nah, sis, this isn't it. Go back to the drawing board. But that Megan could take that product elsewhere. But again, if she's doing a podcast, I don't know how that's going to work. Because it seems like this could be one of those you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back type of backdoor deals between WME, who's probably begging Audible, please take Megan. We can't get her anything. Please take her podcast. You know, we'll get her cheap. Just take the podcast. And of course, Penguin Random House, that relationship, they still have a contract with Harry and Megan with three books coming out. So if Audible takes on this horrible podcast for Megan, it could mean in the future they can get the audiobook rights once again for Harry and Megan's future book. So in my opinion, it could be a deal because of those relationships with Penguin Random House and WME. You know, they're trying to get some favors, trying to sell this couple to anyone who will take them. So do you guys think this could happen? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, guys, that is all the royal news that I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Please be sure to check me out on my other social media accounts as well well as the RDT merch, which will be linked for you down below. Now I do plan to add some brand new designs just in time for the holiday season. So stay tuned. As always, thank you for being here and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys.